I've already reviewed the Bronco Sport, which is a much smaller Bronco based on the Ford Escape. It's extremely capable off-road and fun to drive. <laughs> now, we finally get the big Bronco two-door and outer banks trim. It's a body-on-frame Bronco and it's massive. And that's a recipe to dominate. The Outer Banks is a more luxury-oriented trim package, but after all, the Bronco is going head-to-head -head with the Wrangler, so we'll need to see if it's got the right stuff. Easy peasy. So here we are with the Outer Banks and we're gonna try a little off-roading. So the Outer Banks is not the most capable version of the Bronco. You'd probably wanna get the Sasquatch package or move up for that. But this does have about 200 millimeters, a little bit more of articulation. And this is on the 32 inch tires. Let's see how it does on this concrete piece and see if it can sort of get up over it. Now, one thing about this particular version is it does not have front lockers. Again, you'd probably want to move up or get the option for the front lockers, but I don't think we're going to have too much trouble. Let's see how much wheel travel we actually get. I got the Bronco to a 17 degree roll angle with the rear wheel in the air. Could I have gone further? Probably, but the Bronco belongs to Ford and I'm pretty sure they wanted it back in one piece. So we are at my favorite little hill climb with some moguls. It's pretty steep, but what is more difficult than just steep? It has very, very deep ruts. And I think the four wheel drive system will have no trouble with it. But what I'm a little bit concerned about is the running boards on here are gonna reduce the amount of ground clearance that we have. Remember, this is a slightly more luxe focused version of the outer banks, but we're gonna try it. Let's see what happens. So we've got a number of moguls coming up the hill here. This first one isn't too bad. It's probably about yay deep. And I'm gonna pick a line basically to sort of drive through these. I'm not gonna go through the most crazy part because I will get the frame potentially stuck on one of these here. So this is not too bad. Coming up into here, I'm gonna stay to the right. Ugh. This is a little steeper than it looks. The cameraman almost slipped there. <laughs> Haven't had a vehicle that hasn't made it yet, so I'm pretty confident we're gonna do it, but it's always a little bit hairy in here. All right, I've got it in mud and rut mode. And let's see if I can pick my line here. So starting out, not too bad. Okay, so I got the rear locker on and I'm gonna try to navigate through these ruts. All right, gonna stick to this line over here. All right, not too bad so far. Definitely plenty of grip. The suspension is articulating and I'm getting lots of traction actually, not having any issues with traction at all. No front locker, but I don't think I need it. All right, so let's see, 18 degrees pitch. Oh, two, three, four, gonna settle into this rut here a little bit. Hopefully we got enough clearance up front. Yep, I think we're looking pretty good. Gonna go up the center of this. All right, struggling a little bit, but not too bad. And we're definitely gonna make it. We're definitely gonna make it. In fact, not as hairy as the, uh, the Jeep Grand Cherokee L that I had last week where I had some crazy angles, the shorter wheelbase. And this is a pre-production car, so I don't wanna mess it up, but we didn't get stuck. We had no issues at all, so go Bronco. You passed the test like every other vehicle did. I had full confidence. All right, that was easy. <laughs> so 
So the Bronco has a lot of different configurations and options, and there's six basic trim packages that you can get. So this is the Outer Banks, and this is sort of in the middle, mid-high. This is the one that Ford says if you're looking for technology and sort of luxury on road and off. So think of this one as more of the luxury focused version, if you can call it that. As part of the high package, you get a 12 inch screen. You also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There's also a 360 degree camera that's very useful when parking in tight spaces because the Bronco is big. It is very big. This has got the leather trim package. So this is leather and vinyl, kind of a mix. And it looks pretty nice overall. One thing I like is there's not a lot of glossy black plastic in here. You do have sort of texture material. The seats are actually pretty comfortable. They are manual adjust and they fit my body pretty well. I do have a couple of criticisms though. As nice as the cabin looks, there are a little bit of cheap materials in here. For example, like this little handle thing here, it looks like it would be a little bit more sturdy and it's not like it's not unsturdy, but it does move around a little bit. And the Jeep, for example, this feels like a tow hook. The temperature controls have real buttons and are easy to use. They look modern and work well. Even though the interior space is pretty big, the storage is a little bit limited. There are some helpful cargo nets on the doors and the center console is quite large. This is the two door, so it is about 15 inches shorter than the four door model but you can still get in the back seat. It's not too difficult. There's a lever on top of the seat. Pull it, slide this back. So once you're back here, it's actually pretty roomy. I've got pretty good knee room. There's a pocket in front of me so I can put my cell phone or something like that. Good headroom, not a bad space to spend a little bit of time back here. You've also got two USB ports and 110 volt outlet in the back too. If you're trying to decide between the two door and the four door, the two door definitely looks the business, but it's not quite as practical. Let's see how much space is back here. So this is a big vehicle, of course, but if I'm gonna go pick up somebody at the airport, let's see how we do with a full-size suitcase and a carry-on. So those fit, but uh, not gonna get much else in here. So people like it when I crawl back in these things for, for some reason, I'm not quite sure why, but if you wanted to go camping, for example, and you wanted to sleep back here, it's not gonna be like too comfortable, but if you wanna go to the airport with your friends and pick them up and add some people back here, oh, well, this is like, now it's, it's uh, this is great. This is super comfortable. I highly recommend this mode of transportation. <laughs> Doing, friend. If you're a Jeep fan, listen up. There are two areas where the Bronco really shines. The ride quality, it's really good. It's so much better than the Wrangler. And of course we're gonna compare this to the Wrangler. When you got the solid front axle with the Wrangler, you definitely have the motion that transfers from one side of the vehicle to the other. That's just the way it works. And the ride quality here is so much better on the street than it is in the Wrangler. If you're gonna do a long drive, gonna go from LA to Moab, for example, and gonna do some off-roading. That's gonna be a pretty long drive in the Jeep. This is gonna be a lot more comfortable. Another big thing in here is that the steering is excellent. Once again, comparing to the Wrangler where you have a lot of movement in the steering, you got this worm gear steering system. This is rack and pinion. This is much like a regular truck. Like any Ford product, the steering is very accurate. It has some weight to it. You can feel what's going on with the road. And to me, that is just a big, big benefit. Just, I wish the noise were just a little bit less in here, but call me crazy. There's two different all-wheel drive systems that you can get. So this has got the part-time 4x4 system. It's a shift on the fly, and it does have a low speed transfer case. All of these have a Dana 44 rear axle. So it's a solid rear axle and independent front suspension. Now, if you move up, you can get the optional advanced 4x4 system, which functions pretty much the same. It also has a low speed transfer case, but it is an on-demand system. So you can drive, let's say on a snowy road or a sandy road like this, and it's gonna automatically adapt to the conditions and apply power where you need it. And so it'll turn on and off by itself. The suspension in here is pretty compliant. We're on a pretty crappy off-road surface here. 
sort of sandy. And the ride quality seems to be, you know, it's quite good. I don't have any complaints about it. We're not talking about Range Rover type quality here. This doesn't have any kind of sophisticated Fox shocks or anything like that. So the engine and transmission are a good combination with this V6, this 2.7 liter. Makes 315 horsepower, 415 pound-feet of torque. And it has a lot of torque, especially down low. So when you're doing a hill climb, or going through something that's difficult, you're getting over a difficult rock. There's plenty of torque. It doesn't ever seem to be running out of breath. It's pretty good on the highway too. The transmission is always in the right gear. It's this 10 speed automatic transmission. It's the only one you can get with the 2.7 liter with the V6. You can get the manual with the four cylinder, but if you want the six, you gotta get the automatic transmission. And frankly, I have no complaints at all. It just kind of does its thing and you don't really notice it. And that's really what you want when you're driving in difficult conditions. If you're in a tight section of trail and you need to make a sharp turn, one of the issues with a big vehicle like this is that the turning radius isn't gonna be that good. But Ford has got a little party trick, it's called trail turn assist. And how it works is you hit a button on the dashboard and the inner rear tire is basically gonna stay stationary so the vehicle can kind of pivot around the tire. Let's see how it works. So when I turned it off, the turning radius is much, much bigger. But when you turn it on, I kind of dug this little trench in the sand here, kind of like making your own little Stonehenge so you can get ready for the solar eclipse and pray to the Druids or something like that. <laughs> Maybe I'll do like a more straight version. <laughs> Pretty much all the body panels come off in the Bronco and sorry, I'm not gonna take them all off right now, but I am very curious about the hard top. This does have a roof rack with a crossbar. And so I'm kind of wondering without reading the manual, how easy or difficult it's gonna be to try to take off one of these panels with that uh, roof rack. Let's, let's see what happens. A little bit tricky. Maybe not, maybe, let's see. Uh-huh. All right, so it is possible for one person to take off one of the roof panels, even with the crossbar in place. Probably easier without it, but I had to try. So back to the question, does the Bronco dominate? Well, compared to the Jeep, it rides better. I think it has a nicer interior. The V6 engine is more powerful and more torquey. And the steering is on a whole different planet. The steering is worlds, worlds better. And overall, driving it on road is just a much nicer, much more modern feeling vehicle. But here's the thing. Jeep has been at this for a very long time and they've had a lot of experience refining and improving the vehicle and it is a proven capable off-road performer and that's why you see Jeeps everywhere when you're out in the wilderness. And the Bronco is still new, but is the Outer Banks the ultimate off-road Bronco? Not really. For that, you probably want to look at something like the Wild Track or perhaps the Badlands Edition and you definitely want to get the front locker if you're going to do some serious off-roading, but you probably knew that anyways. So for now, Jeep dominates the sales charts, but the Bronco is a very serious, worthy competitor. They're coming in pretty hot. They're posing a very significant threat to the Jeep dominance, and I think it's a good thing to look at. And if you got one on order and you're gonna get it soon, I think you're gonna be very, very happy with it. My name is Eric. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you in the next video.